Well, hello again. We're up to part two. And boy, did we get a bunch of comments to part one. I, I really appreciate that. There, a lot of interest uh, seems to have been generated. Both myself and Brendan were kind of surprised by all that. Some of you who chimed in with comments I've never seen before. I didn't know you were my subscribers. And I appreciate you doing that. Or if you had chimed in at an earlier time, I just don't remember it. And uh, I get so many comments, you know, with so many videos over the years. <laughs> It's hard to remember everyone. Anyway, I'm glad to have you here. I really am. Uh, I want to start out with uh, part two. I, I can't answer all of the comments uh, and, and do my daily job and, you know, keep the wife happy with her things and, and work on the TV and whatever else I'm going to do. I can't get it all done. Uh, I try, but I just can't. So well, I'm going to have to answer it this way since we got so many. And uh, I, most of you said, well, we're real, I'm real glad to see this, and I'm looking forward to watching the, uh, the series anyway. But there were a few comments that had questions uh, or something that I wanted to comment back on, so I've done it this way before. We'll do it this way again. First, I want to start out with our good subscriber, <coughs> Rob B. C. R. X. Rob has been a subscriber who comments all the time on all my videos he, for quite a while now. And he wrote that he lost his grandma just a couple days ago. Today is the uh, 6th of January. He just lost his grandma shortly uh, ago. And she was 82 years old. She, it was a combination, I guess, of old age and pneumonia. And uh, he made it to the hospital in time. Uh, spent, I guess, the last 30 minutes with her before she passed away. They were fairly close, he says. You know, our condolences to you, uh, Rob. It's, it's really terrible. Uh, his, it, it happens, though. It, you know, it happens to everyone going to happen to everybody and uh, apparently she was a native of Italy native of Italy wound up in Canada that's where Rob lives up in Canada so we're real sorry to hear that my friend but keep this in mind you know I've done genealogy research uh, I did it for 35 years or so 30 35 years and one thing I learned is as long as we're alive who knew these people, or in your case, who knew your grandma, as long as you're alive, as long as, as long as others are alive who knew her, she'll never be gone. She won't be gone. There will come a time when she will be gone. There'll come a time when you'll be gone. I'll be gone. Because the last person who ever remembered us will have gone, and that'll be it. But meanwhile, you know, but however, if you record something down in writing with some photographs or video, recording something about your grandma she again will continue to live okay keep that in mind those of you you know I like to stress once in a while even in these videos if you haven't made a video uh, especially in this day and age with video camera if you haven't made a video of your grandma great grandma parents whomever that you are close to and you'd like to have you know memories made of you need to do it you need to do it now don't wait I had a friend of mine at work he paid attention to me he got a camera he filmed his grandma she died a couple of years later at the age of 96. I was with him the day he went over, and we interviewed her in her home for at least a half an hour or more. He said, he said just recently, I, I'm so glad you made me do that, because every time I want to remember my grandma, I can I, I just fire that thing up and watch and you know, hear her voice again and all that stuff. So, Rob, again, I'm sorry to hear it, my friend. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, Radio Ken told me that on his comment that there's a photo fact set 285 folder 14 that covers this television. Yes, there is. I have it right here. Before, I, I've, I've stated this in many of my restorations, and matter of fact, I think all of them. Before you start any restoration on a radio, a TV, a phonograph, whatever, do your homework. Try to get your paperwork together. Try to get your parts list. Try to get your schematics. Everything you can get that's available on the item you'll be working on do that in advance don't just tear apart your radio or whatever it is and then just say geez I wish I had a schematic on this show <laughs> or I wonder if this is right or is this wired right I don't know you get your paperwork get your homework I even took the schematic and I blew it up into three pages where I could see better you know my age my old eyes are a little weak you know and they need a little help okay do your homework get everything together find out how many capacitors this thing has uh, uh, I think there's 27 capacitors in this television that I have to change out, which I will be doing at a later date. And, uh, you know, one thing at a time, one step at a time. Another one, uh, another guy commented, another of our subscribers said, well, you got a focus problem with your camera. Well, I know that. 
<laughs> I've been using this camera for quite a while. We know these things, you know, and we just got to live with it. It's a bloggy touch camera. It's not a high priced professional type. I just use it for YouTube, you know, I got a little focus problem here and there. I can live with it. And I saved a lot of money by buying a bloggy touch, by the way. Jeffrey B304 wants to know where the color TV console is. Well, it's out in the shed, still sitting there. He said, are you ever going to work on it? Yes, but I'm not going to do a YouTube video on it. I said that uh, early on, if I remember. I'm just going to piddle with it, play with it when the time comes. Everything keeps coming in ahead of it. I don't understand why. Uh, Ran Ham 335 he wants to know if I'm still doing ham radio stuff. Not really, not right now. Too many other things going on. And uh, oh, However, I did get my extra class, so that, that I guess I'm doing some stuff. <laughs> And uh, Ernest Lingerfelt wanted to know if I ever came across any of those drugstore tube testers we had as a kid. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, it was about, and it was last fall. I was up in Rogers, Arkansas, and we hit the flea markets with my daughter-in-law, and there was one that was fully operational, even had some tubes in it. Pretty good size one, you know. And the lady, I think, wanted, uh, seemed to me she wanted $180 for it. It was yellow, had the door down underneath where they stored the tubes. All Pretty neat little deal. Yeah, I think she bought $180 for it. And it was functional. I put a tube in and tested it. And, of course, all the needle did was go good or bad. But it lit up. It's kind of neat. Yes, they are around. I was kind of happy I find that one, actually. Buzz 1151. Oh, Buzz 1151. <laughs> well, Buzz wants to know. Yeah, He said, hey, when you, if you ever get this TV fixed, you get it fixed. He said, will you... We you put the, uh, a Rifleman show on there with Chuck Connors. Chuck Connors is the man and all that jazz. Well, not a problem, Buzz, because right here I have DVDs of Chuck Connor and the Rifleman. Matter of fact, I also have the Cisco Kid, Roy Rogers, Lone Ranger, Bat Masterson, uh, Death Valley Days, the Range Rider. Remember him? It's all in this little pack of westerns. So we'll get that done for you, even though you know, even though you're not as good looking as I am, I'll still take care of you. All right, I was surprised to find out that over in Europe, England, Netherlands, places like that, that they too watched the TV show Bonanza years ago. I didn't know that. I don't know if they're watching them now or I don't know if they watched them back in the 60s when we watched them. Uh, I know that they did watch them, but I don't know how far back it started. How about that? I did not know that. Uh, uh, Troy Dog. Troy Dog wants to see what the... Uh, light bulb looks like in the halo light. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if the bulb turns out to be good, if it turns out to light up, it'd be good. I'm not going to take the chance of tearing it all apart and take a risk on breaking it. But I will tell you what it looks like. It's about as big around as my pinky, and it's square. It comes around. It's got two connectors at the very start of it, and it just goes up and around and down and across and then it terminates very close to the original starting point that's all it is a little round thing about that that big around okay and I don't want if you damage it break it or whatever where do you get another one you know I saw one I guess about three years ago for sale on eBay however you know it, at that time I hadn't didn't have a TV or anything so I just kind of logged it in my memory bank there was one for, for sale but the guy didn't even know if it worked <laughs> You know, so you're, you know, it's a 120 volt bulb, by the way, directly off. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, a, the transformer rather that drives it. It comes off the 120 volt source uh, out of the television, and then lights the bulb. Uh, then we have uh, E I R P C A L C, Air P Calc. <laughs> I guess that's the way you pronounce. He said, you know, if that bulb doesn't light in that uh, halo light. Don't you be putting LEDs in there. Well, I got news for you. If I, if it doesn't light and I can't find a bulb, that's what's going in there. What else can I do? Well, I bought, you know, I'll figure out something. I'll try something to, you know, to get it to work and everything. I can't just leave it unlit. And I understand your concern here. Trust me. You know, it's supposed to have a fluorescent bulb in there. And I want to put LEDs. I, I understand. That. You know, we're, we're, we're in sync on this. Well, that's the best I can do right now, okay? Thank you all for commenting. Fantastic job. Stay with me on this. Okay. Uh, today, what I plan to do is check out a few of the... Well, I'm going to try to check out all the coils in the chassis. 
and you'll see that later on in the video. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Trader. Now you have beaten our jackpot clock. It was sure worth coming back for, wasn't it? Well, let's see what you've won. Just take a look over here. It's the 1954 Sylvania Stratford with a 21-inch screen and the great new PhotoPower chassis for photographically clear pictures in even the most distant reception areas. And, of course, the Stratford has halo light for the greatest eye comfort in all television. Congratulations, Private and Mrs. Schrader. You have just won Sylvania's jackpot prize. Of water. In order to actually... Well, I got the old picture tube nice and clean. The old CRT. The cathode ray tube. Anyway, I tell you what, right now, the only problem I have right now with it is some of this plastic that's covering the... Let me see if I can get a zoom in there a little bit close. Some of the plastic covering the deflection coils, so you get a better focus, there we go, has flaked off and a lot of it came down and just, just crumbled away as I was wiping it down, just really thin, it just crumbles into little pieces in my hands. So I'll have to coat that with some kind of uh, non-conductive material and I think I have just a thing. All right, it's time to clean off the old chassis. There's a possibility that this chassis is not the one in the schematic that I have. We have to find out. We have to find out what the tube count is, you know, the tube numbers, and match them up. But right now, I need to get the dirt off it so I can do anything. And it's, it's going to blow it nice and it's going to blow it nice and clean. Whenever you're uh, blowing the dust off with any high-pressure air of any kind, just be careful around your flyback transformer. Now you'll notice there's a crack in the wax right here. If I get my air hose too close to that, the air will actually go up underneath that wax and pull it right off. You don't want to do that. Just kind of just go gentle into the night with that, okay? Very careful. Stay away from it as much as possible, but at the same time, you have to get the dust off it. So that's why we use a little paintbrush, a little soft paintbrush. We do the best we can without causing further damage. You understand that? Good. That's what we're doing right now. I'm loosening up all the, uh, the dust. That would not come loose when I just sprayed it with the hose in the air. And I'm going to give it a second shot here in a minute. Well, I'm pretty happy with the first cleaning. The results turned out really nice. This chassis is really in super condition. Let me tip it up here, get another look at the bottom. Boy, that, look at that. That almost looks brand spanking new under there. That's incredible. Got a dirty old tube down there, but that's where the horizontal output tube is. I'm amazed. Look at this. Everything is in perfect condition. There's nothing, not, not even remotely looks, well, let me see. Looks like we got something a little burned right there. What the heck is that? Let me zoom in on that. Ooh, what do we got here? Yeah, we got some stuff messed up right there. Ooh, it looks like this transformer might be bad. Mm, that's not good. What is that? Looks like... Looks like a choke. It just looks like a choke. I'll have to check. I'll have to check it out later. We got something burned right here, and it looks like this this coil right here might be bad. If I can focus in on it a little bit better. Today we're testing the tubes. So far, I've tested uh, one. It was yeah, you know, it was okay. It wasn't really what you call a top-notch tube, but it is acceptable. This is the next one I'm checking here. It's called a 6x8. And if it, you know, if it falls somewhere in this area right here, when I pull the button, those of you who have seen me test tubes before, no big deal. You just put it in, set it up according to what's on the chart, and then you just pull this little knob, and uh, like I said, it should fall somewhere on the top scale up there. Let me pull it. Here we go. All right, that's pretty good tube. Pretty good, strong tube there. Now we're just going to go through the entire bag and see what we can come up with. All the tubes have been checked, and I have these that were good. No problem at all. They work fine, but I had 11 that were not good. Had to get rid of them. They were weak or in, almost inoperable. Uh, so what I did was the ones in the boxes, uh, almost all the ones in the boxes, I think all but two, uh, I had to send away for at findatube.com. Uh, and uh, the rest I had in my uh, personal tube stock. So we've got all the tubes we need now to operate this TV, they're all in great shape. 
So what I'm doing right now, what I've been doing uh, for the last hour or so, is checking all the little coils, like these things right here, and each of the, you know, each of these things, these all around. I could find wherever I had to ohm out. I got the schematic and went through it. I checked the uh, the power transformer. All the coils are easy to get to, real easy to find, real easy to get to. I mean, I was able to go zip, 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 and uh, everything is fine. I can't believe it. I, the only thing left to do now is to start replacing capacitors. I can't, the chokes are good, chokes are good, everything is hunky-dory. So once I get the capacitors uh, all changed, I think what I'll do is that's, that'll be our next video. Hopefully I'll have them all done by the time I come back for the next video. So I think what we need to do right now is just go ahead and wrap this baby up. There's not going to be a whole lot to do. This, this chassis is almost new. Uh, one more thing down here. Let me get this light here. I told you earlier that it looked like this wire was burnt right here. That wire is not burnt. Let me see if I can get over here. Get a little close up here. That wire is not burnt. Believe it or not, that's a that's a, uh, a small, I think it's 25 gauge piece of wire. It's two inches long underneath an insulation. And that's a fuse. It's acting as a fuse. I think it's 25, 28 gauge maybe. I think it's 28. I can't remember. It's very small, very small. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it. I may wind up desoldering this, removing that insulation, and put some really nice uh, high-quality insulation on there and put it right back where it was. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I may wind up just snipping this off and covering it with... Uh, it, it, what that is is not burned. That's it's some kind of corrosion. I don't, I don't know why it's corroded right there. That's blue copper corrosion. Strange. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just a fuse, okay? Anyway, that's it for now, and uh, next time we should have lots of new capacitors in there. Until next time, this is John. I'll tell you what, before I leave, let's, let's, uh, let me tell you a little story here that I read about on the Antique Radio Forum several years ago. There was a fellow who was restoring a chassis, much, you know, just like I'm doing right now. And he discovered a wire that had never been soldered at the factory. It was run through a terminal. And it was just sort of like hanging there. And he said, you know, <laughs> I'll bet when the owner, of that TV, the owner of that TV, all the time he had that thing, every once in a while that wire from people walking across the floor and maybe jiggling the TV, you know, making the TV shift a little bit. Every once in a while that wire would not make contact with the metal on the terminal and the TV would, you know, mess up. So they'd go over there and they'd probably bang on the TV. <laughs> and I remember my parents and many other people back in the back in the 50s in particular and early 60s. I remember them beating on the sides of a television or hitting the top of it until it would finally start working. <laughs> and that might have been some of the problems we had. Loose connections, unsoldered connectors, I don't know. But that's the way it used to be in the old days. Uh, for those of you who are around my age, I know that you remember your dad banging on the dash of his car to get the radio working, too. <laughs> yeah, my old man, boy, he used to go, bang, bang, come on. I think what he was doing was trying to get the vibrator working. I know that you guys know about that, some of you. Anyway, a little story for our younger types, okay?